Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins. Today I'm going to show you a very basic thing with HTML and JavaScript for interaction. We're going to create a simple HTML page that has a form with an input and a submit button. And anytime that we submit that, we're going to transform the input using JavaScript and display some output. So the first thing that we need to do in here for an HTML document is type doc type HTML. That's what makes this HTML. Now over here I have a Chrome preview of this file. So anytime I refresh it, you'll see whatever we're typing. I'm also going to say that the character set is UTF-8, even though I don't know if we'll use any special characters. And the other thing that we need to make it a valid HTML document is a title. So I'm going to say input demo. So in here, I described we were going to have a form. And in the form, we're going to have an input. And we're going to have a submit button. So that's what that looks like, a form with an input and a submit button. Now, we're also going to put JavaScript in here. So I'm going to do script type equals module so that we're working with modern JavaScript. And I'm going to say when the form is submitted by this button. So we're going to listen to the submit event on the form. So to select the form, I'm going to say document query selector form. Now, this is going to match the first form in our document, which is this one. I'm going to say add event listener submit and then we're going to put an event handling function so whenever the submit event happens on the form element this code will run. So the last thing I'm going to do here is we wanted to transform the output and put it somewhere that we can see it. So there is an output element exactly for that. So when the form is submitted, what will happen? Will it reload the page? Probably. So let's say event prevent default, which just says cancel whatever the default behavior of this event is. And what we want to do is work with this input. So first, let's see if we can select this element. We're going to grab its value, but let's see if we can do it. So I'm going to do console log event target, which refers to the element. If this is the event, the event target is the thing that had the event, which is the form. So let me open a console. We'll do this. And when you submit, we see the event target is that. So if I say query selector for the first input inside the form, it'll show us this. So that is that. So if we do value and say, hello, oops, I should reload, uh, hello, then we see the value here. So what we want to do is we want to write to the output based on transforming this. So let's say that this is going to be a number. Let's say that something is going to be required. So if you try to submit an empty form, it'll say you need something. So we can put two in, we can put whatever you want. All right, so let's transform this. So we know that our output element is going to be the first output in the document. So what if we say set its value to this value times 2? If I put 2 in here, and submit it, this should be 2. 
multiplied by 2 should be 4, so that evaluates to 4. And we are setting the value of the first output element in the document, which is this one. So if you were to look over here in the DevTools, if we make this 10, it should say 20. We see that being updated. So this is all that you need to do that kind of behavior. Um, just to recap what we've done here, this is a text file into which we wrote doc type HTML so that the browser knows this is HTML. We put this in, and although we didn't use any special characters, that's always good to have in there. Technically, we did not need that. Um, you do need a title for an HTML element. Uh, we added JavaScript to change the default behavior of submitting this form from reloading the page and submitting the form data into doing something with JavaScript. The HTML on the page was a form with an input. We said that you needed something. It was required. You couldn't submit it if it's empty. We said the type of the input was a number. And uh, we never used the name, but it's always a good idea to have a name. We also had a submit button, and we had an output element to display the output. Now, when this form was submitted, we prevented the default behavior. We were able to do this because we selected the form in JavaScript and then did add event listener to listen to the submit event. We have an event handling function, and the first thing it does is prevent the default behavior. Then the second thing it does is it selects the first output element in the document and assigns its value to be the first input element inside our forms value multiplied by two. So no matter what we enter into this number input, whenever we submit it, the output is going to be double that. So hopefully that makes sense and shows you how these pieces come together, um, what you need in the document to make it good HTML, um, a simple way to structure the form with the two uh, inputs inside of it, uh, the ability to use the HTML output element for exactly this type of computation, and then in JavaScript showing you how to get a reference to that element, uh, add an event listener for a specific event with a function that handles that event, and then how to do our custom behavior. Uh, hope you're having a great day and catch you in the next video.